dear students today's we are continue the unit first that is a bee biology in the previous lecture we already discuss about the history economic importance of the apiculture then the classification habit and habitat and characteristics and economic importance of the different species of the honey bees in this lecture we are continue that bee biology the next topic today's we are discussing about the morphology here in this morphology but one thing is that why morphology we know about that students that honey bees are the social bees which lives in the colony and when they lives in the colony which consist of different caste and that is name is the polymorphism in the honey bees trimorphic forms are present a single queen number of the drones as well as an, uh, about the thousands of the worker bees are present and when they lives in the colony the distribution of work which also observed especially when we focus toward the worker bees that worker bees were structural adaptations which are observed and that structural adaptations which are very important for doing their work another thing is that when we reared the honey bees for commercial aspects we must know the morphological feature of the honey bees here what are the structural adaptations are present in the worker bees especially first one that is a body the body which is covered with the hairs and has structural adaptations for carrying the nectar as well as the pollen another thing is that as the movement of the abdomen of the worker bees they performing the dance when they collect the food when visiting the different flowers in the agriculture field and when the performing dance they communicate to the other members of the colony also next one is the mouth parts here also the adaptations in the mouth parts which are important for the feeding purposes to the larval forms as well as the another members of the colony molding the wax also removing dead materials from the hive collection of the nectar water and resinous substances for the comb preparation in case of the eyes they also modified especially the compound eyes are present and which acts as a sensory organs for the sight another modification in the antennae also observed no doubt they are acts as a sensory organ for the test smell and the touch in case of the legs also no doubt they are important for the locomotion in many insects but that legs which are important for the collection and dislodge the pollen in the colony wings also modified the wings which are important for the flight purposes but they are also important for the fanning to maintaining the temperature of the comb and which maintain the temperature around 32 to 35 degrees celsius the defensive organ in the form of the sting which is present in the last part of the abdomen and which is important for guarding the entrance to the to their nest here these all are the different modifications which are present in the worker bees now today's we are discussing about the head region where different parts are present now that is a morphology this is the general structure of the honey bee especially the worker bee and that worker bee where the body which is divided into head thorax and abdomen that three parts are present in case of the head number of the sensory organs are present 
that is compound eyes, antennae and the mouth parts. Toward the thorax, three segments are present but along with that four wings and the hind wings are present as well as three pairs of the legs are present in the form of the prothoracic leg, mesothoracic leg and the metathoracic leg. Most toward the abdomen, the abdomen at the terminal part or terminal aid which modified in the form of the sting which acts as the defensive organ. Most toward the first one that is the head region. In case of the head, the number of the sensory organs or feeding organs are present. First is the compound eyes. These are the compound eyes. Second one, the ocelli, which are located at the topmost position in the head region. Paired antennae also present, as well as the mouth parts are present. Now, first is the compound eyes. These are the compound eyes are present, which always a paired structure. Two big multi lenses compound eyes are located on the either side of the head region. This is the complete head region and either side of the head region that big compound eyes are present. Each eye bears external covering that is the cornea. That outer covering that name is the cornea which is present. It is divided into a large number of hexagonal facet that is omatidia that each eye externally covered with the cornea and that cornea which further subdivided into number of hexagonal facets and that name is the omatidia. Around 5000 to 8000 omatidia are present in the honeybee. Bees can distinguish different colors but are red blind and can pursue the ultraviolet rays that is very important they unable to receive the red color. This is the structure of a single eye that is compound eye. Number of that small facets are to be present when we magnify these are the facets which are present. Most toward the ocelli. Once again that is a head region that compound eyes and look at that at the topmost condition or the position where the three ocelli are present. This is the another structure of the ocelli. Three ocelli as per their position one is the median and two are the laterally located on the dorsal region of the head region. Each ocellus bears a single lens. It means that we can say that it is a single eye or the simple eye. The ocelli are light sensitive organs. It play a key role in maintaining the diurnal rhythm also. After that third part which is located in the head region that is the antenna. The antennae are short paired, many jointed and geniculate type. That is a one of the type of the antennae. Geniculate, it means that somewhat the elbow, not the straight in a position, somewhat the curved or the elbow type that antennae which are present in the honeybees and ants also. Each antenna consists of a long scape, a small pedicel and flagellum. It means that each antenna which is divided into the three parts here, scape, pedicel and the flagellum. Each flagellum that is a topmost portion of the antenna, each flagellum has a 10 segments in the female and 11 in the male. Female that is the worker bees as well as the queen bee where 10 segments of the flagellum are present while 11 which are observed in the male that is the drone we say that. This is the basal part that is the scape which is articulated to the socket located in the head region. The above to that of this scape the anteriorly articulated a small short pedicel 
and further that extended part in the form of the flagellum where 10 to 11 segments are present. Each antenna bears thousands of the sensory hairs which acts as a organ of the touch that is a mechanoreceptor, smell that is a odor receptor as well as the test that is a gustatory receptor. It means that antenna which are very important when the worker bees moves toward the different flowers and collect the pollen grains and the nectar for that time there is a necessity is of the smell, test as well as the touch. The antenna also serve as the flight speed regulator during the movement from one flower to the another flower there is a necessity is of the speed and that also maintained by the antenna also. The fourth region located in the head that is the mouth parts. The mouth parts are chewing and lapping type. This is the head region and at the terminal end where the mouth parts are present. Look at that. At the lateral side of the head region that is the compound eyes are present. The this portion, central portion that name is the fronts. The terminal portion or the anterior where the clypeus is present and from this clypeus the first part of the mouth which is observed in the form of the labrum. We focus the detailed structure of the mouth parts further. They are adapted for the collection of the pollen and a nectar and molding the wax has the different functions collection of the pollen as well as the nectar from the flowers and in the house or the colony or the comb they mold the wax for the preparation of or the construction of the comb also. It consists of the different parts that is the labrum, epipharynx, mandibles, maxillae and the labium. We can focus here that is a labrum which are connected basally toward the clypeus that is a part of the head region. Epipharynx which is present just at the lower side of the labrum. Mandibles which are present which always remains in the paired. Some of the parts which are observed here that is a maxilla in the form of the maxillary pulp and a labium in the form of the labial pulp and the, that flabellum or the glossa here. But detailed structure focused in the next slide also. Here that four parts that is labrum, epipharynx, mandible, maxillae and the labium that is the five parts where the labrum and the mandibles constitute the chewing type. You know about the chewing gum same which is observed or whose function carried by the mandibles as well as the labrum. Maxillae and the labium also important and which form the elongated lapping tongue, lapping tongue also. When they visit the flowers and during collection of the nectar that sugary syrup which is easily lapped by the modification of the maxillae and the labium to form the tongue we see that. This is the structure of the mouth parts of the worker bee. Now we focus the detailed structure of the mouth part. First of all the labrum, it lies below the clypeus already explained here and observed also. It forms the upper lip, it protects the internal mouth parts. Just inside the epipharynx is present which is muscular. It lies below the labrum and it is the organ of the test. After that the paired structure in the form of the mandibles are present. They are paired as well as the chitinized, highly chitinized and the strong that mandibles which are short no doubt. At the anterior end of the mandibles in the worker bees whose border which is very soft or edges which are very soft here has the different functions that mandibles which are involved in the molding the wax for the preparation or the construction of the comb, manipulating the pollen when visit to the different flowers, prepare honey bread for feeding, feeding the larvae as well as the drones, collection of the resinous materials for construction of the combs also. Removal of the dead materials from the comb, these are the different functions carried by the mandibles. After that, the next part 
that is a maxilla. The maxilla where different parts are present, the elongated slender first part that is a cordo which is located in the socket of the oral cavity, terminally which is extended into the somewhat elongated triangular part that name is a stipus. The anterior part of the stipus there is two processes are present one is the rudimentary maxillary pulp in general or normally the five digits are present or the segments are present is of the maxillary pulp but in case of the worker bees especially the honey bees where maxillary pulps which are rudimentary or we say that vestigial non-functional here. Inner side the another process is present in the form of the lacinia that lacinia which also rudimentary. Further that the another extended part which is present in the form of the gully, gully which is elongated and blade like. It form the tongue with the maxilla. In the combination with the maxilla, the gully they form the tongue we say that. After that, the another part toward the inner side the labium is present. That labium where the different parts are present, the basal triangular part that name is a submentum, inner side the another triangular part is present that is a mentum, after that the elongated somewhat the rectangular part in the form of the prementum is present and terminal end of the prementum here. The two processes or the paired structures are present that name is the labial pulp. That labial pulp is long which form the sucking tube with the maxillary gully. Inner side the paraglossa are present which also the paired structure but are present in the reduced forms here. Just above to that of this paraglossa which are externally covered by the pulpy form. After that toward the inner side the extended part is present which is very important that name is the glossa. Glossa which always in the paired but they unite one to another to form the ligula we say that here. Here that glossa which is greatly elongated to form the hairy flexible tongue. The tongue or the glossa or the ligula extended or ends into the spoon or that honey spoon or the labellum. It helps to reach and scoop the nectaries during the visiting the flowers here. After that, this is the complete structure of the mouth parts. Basically, we say that chewing and the lapping type. Further that moves toward the salivary glands. The salivary glands which are two pairs, especially we say that exocrine glands located one in the head region and as per the name head salivary gland which also known as the cephalic salivary gland and another pair located in the thoracic region and hence give the name that is a thoracic salivary gland. This is the body of the worker bee and at the head region the paired structures are present in the form of the head salivary gland or cephalic salivary gland while toward the thoracic region where the another gland is present that name is the thoracic salivary gland. Now this is the head gland and this one is the thoracic salivary gland which always remains in the pair. Look at that their structures. The four ducts of the glands are unite into one median tube or common salivary duct which enters the base of the labium. Look at that. This is the thoracic gland always remains in the paired. These are the ducts of the thoracic glands. They unite one to another and the head salivary glands whose ducts which also unite here and all the ducts unite to form the common or the median salivary duct which further opens at the base of the labium. Salivary glands which are well developed in the queens as well as the worker bees. 
while in dons there is no any necessity they are very small and functionless here that head salivary glands which produce the oily secretion and when we say that oily secretion which is used to soften the wax for the during the construction of the comb as well as lubricate the mouth parts because mouth parts has a different functions here and for this proper movement or proper mechanism of that mouth parts it is necessity is of the lubrication here and that lubrication carried by the oil secretion secreted by the head salivary gland while the another function also that secretion can be added to the royal jelly also we know about that royal jelly which is secreted by the hypopharyngeal gland which also present in the head region the salivary gland that is a both salivary gland especially we focus the thoracic salivary glands of the worker bees are more active when they are foraging it means that foraging means when they visit to the flowers for the collection of the pollen as well as the nectar and during such times that salivary glands which are very active both salivary secretion that is secretion from the thoracic gland and secretion from the head gland is used as a solvent when a bee is feeding on the sugar it means that the certain enzymes are present which has the ability to digest the sugar content which is present in the that sugar solution secreted by the gland dear friends already discuss in this lecture about the different features and structural adaptations of the worker bees of which only today's we focused that the head the next lecture we discuss about the thoracic region and the abdominal region of the worker bees and their certain adaptations thank you